can we stop this disturbing trend right here and now in New York City and send a message across the country that public education is not for sale? When I first decided to follow my calling into the field of education over three decades ago, I did so because I wanted to impact the lives of young people, regardless of the circumstances they were born into. After a stint as the director of the Grand Houses Daycare Center in Harlem, I spent the bulk of my career at PS 199Q in Sunnyside, Queens. Nearly all of my students came from recent immigrant families working to succeed here in the United States. I focused on ensuring all the children under my care and tutelage had what they needed to make a positive impact in their own lives as well as the world around them. This hearing will also ask whether network directors have any other outside income, and if so, how it is reported. The mission of public school education is at stake. We elected officials are guardians of this public good and should be vigilant of anything that will erode it. So, since you do do these reviews, and in your testimony you said that uh, you review discipline policies, etc., so forth and so on, I'm sure you're aware, and if you're not, I have a copy of the uh, Coney Island Charter Prep Schools Handbook. Can I ask uh, the sergeant to please give them a copy and ask you to turn to page 18? At the Coney Island uh, Charter Prep, the Coney Island Charter Prep, what they do is they give out pride dollars when students are good. When students are not so good, they take away pride dollars, which, as a teacher, I've heard before, behavior modification, okay. But what I have not heard before, and what is extremely troublesome, to me is that when a child runs out of these pride dollars, every other kid in the class is forbidden to talk to the BAD bad child. In addition, that child who is out of pride dollars is required to wear an orange shirt all the length of his punishment so that other children in the school and in the class know that they are not allowed to talk to him. And if the other children in the class talk to the child wearing the orange shirt, they have pride dollars deducted from their bank. I have written a letter to Richard Condon, the Special Commissioner of Investigation for the Department of Education, to ask him to investigate this situation. I have to tell you that I was a New York City public school teacher for 25 years, and if I had done that in my classroom, I would have been escorted out of the school in handcuffs. And I cannot believe that this has escaped scrutiny by the Department of Education or that even any charter school or any educator would put forth a discipline plan like this. I'm urging you, and I know this happened prior to your taking the reins in the Department of Education, but to me this amounts to corporal punishment and it should be forbidden in any school in New York City. I'd like to have your response, please. I'd only like to say that um, charter schools have the ability to create discipline policies. Our district school's discipline policy is posted, it's discussed with parents, it's put out there every year, it's revised, and we ensure that our district schools are adhering to that policy. Charter schools have the ability to create their own discipline policies, and they are not only encouraged, but for DOE charter schools, certainly, there's a different level of accountability, and they need to be published and transparent to all parents so parents can make informed decisions about this. This is child's a DOE discipline. authorized charter school of which you have oversight over. So, are you saying that this discipline policy is okay? So Let me read it. Let me read it. No. It says, out of pride. 
If serving this consequence, scholars, by the way, I love the use of the word scholars, why we just don't call them students, I don't know, <laughs> will attend class throughout the day, but will lose the privilege to enjoy the social elements of Coney Island Prep. These scholars should not speak to other scholars except with the permission of a staff member, usually to complete group work. Likewise, other scholars should not speak to or otherwise engage with the scholar without the explicit direction of a staff member or need to use common courtesies. Scholars, and this is underlined and in bold, scholars who engage with scholars who are out of the pride will earn an instigating deduction. Scholars who are out of the pride will wear an orange t-shirt over their uniform, which we provide. How nice that they provide the t-shirt, I have to say. So I'm asking, does your oversight over these charter schools also allow you to end a discipline policy such as this? And by the way, there have been many other examples of similar discipline policies in other schools throughout the city. And let me tell you some of them. <clears throat> in the Annenberg report, which was released yesterday, just five months ago, it was reported at Kip Star Washington Heights Charter School that children as young as five years old were placed in isolated and padded cool-down closets, causing some children to have anxiety attacks. The school defended the practice, though some parents withdrew, withdrew their children from the school. I can't imagine why. A 12, 2012 report by the New York Civil Liberties Union found that some charter schools suspend students at rates many times higher than the city's traditional public schools. For example, the report found that two Brooklyn collegiate charter schools in the Uncommon Schools Network suspend students at 35 and 40 percent rates, respectively. Achievement First, another charter network with strict behavior codes, suspends 4 to 18 percent of its students at the city's schools, higher than the average in the regular public schools. When are we going to get a handle on these discipline policies? So I'd like to talk about each one of them, if I can. For the Coney Island Charter School, to be perfectly frank, I did read it in the packet I was handed when I came here, and it's a DOE authorized charter school. I will let you know that we will look into it, and I will certainly. Uh, well, my question goes even beyond just this example. This is the one example that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. I gave you a couple of other examples that the media became aware of. What policies do we have in place in the DOE to ensure that every discipline policy in every charter school is appropriate and sound educational policy? The DOE does not have the authority for non-DOE authorized charter schools. It's actually in the hands of the Board of Trustees to create a discipline policy that is aligned with their goals, to make it public to parents, and to be able to disseminate that to ensure that parents are aware of what the discipline policies are, what the financial policies are. So for non-DOE authorized charter schools, it is their decision to be able to do that. And when complaints come in, or issues come in, or concerns come in, we certainly address them with the charter school principal with the Board of Trustees, and we escalate it to the authorizer. And so I'm going to ask you, as the chair of this committee, to go back and to report to me on every one of your 69 charter schools on their discipline policies, so that we can be sure. I'm also going to ask charter schools that are outside of the network to post their discipline policies online, because I did a sample survey and was not able to find many of the outside of the network, of outside of the DOE schools, uh, discipline policies online as well. Uh, this type of a situation is actually a disgrace, and um, it really has to be dealt with in the firmest terms. Part of the problem, as you stated correctly, is that the out of the DOE, the, uh, the non-DOE authorized charter schools don't have to have accountability. And that is exactly why I am holding this hearing today because somebody must hold them accountable for these types of practices. It just they're not accountable to us. They are accountable I, to their boards and to the... But Coney Island is, and the other 69 are, and that's why I'd like to get a report on all I, of those schools. I will commit involved. to you both to look at the 69 schools and the discipline policies with our team and to talk about um, 
with the Chancellor of some of the issues you raised. But I, I do want to add that all of their discipline policies must be in compliance with state and federal regulations around due process and afford students with special education all of the additional protections that they uh, are entitled to. And our office uh, did uh, this fall do a workshop on discipline and all of the elements uh, that need to be in a discipline policy for charter schools. Right. So I am not just talking about what state regs state. I'm talking about what's developmentally appropriate for children in our school system. And if charter schools are in fact public schools, then they need to have the light of accountability shined on them so that we know what they're doing in terms of disciplining our students. If you're putting kids in a padded room, that's like solitary confinement. And I just went to Rikers Island on Monday and I brought five council members with me to see the conditions there. Very similar to this. If you're talking about making children stand out by wearing an orange shirt around the school for a day or two days, a week or two weeks, however long the punishment is, to me that amounts to corporal punishment. When I was teaching, I was told I was not allowed to ask children to write a hundred times I will learn to behave. That is considered corporal punishment. How is this any different? It is your responsibility to ensure that this does not happen in our public schools. And as far as the state is concerned, I urge the state controller, I urge the city controller to take up this issue and to investigate every one of our schools. Now that I have referred it over to the Department of Investigation, I hope that they will also take action on this. The problem is, is who are they going to hold accountable? I hope that they hold accountable the board of directors at the Coney Island Charter School because they're the ones who probably should be arrested. And I would like to know, I would like to know if any child in any of these schools has been put through this process. I, I can promise you that I will go back under this administration and take a look at those policies and report back to you. And, and, and just because I, 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 I've hit you very hard and, no, and no, I understand no. you're new to this role as well. But you know, um, it, these are the major concerns in terms of being an educator about what's going on in our schools. I understand. Discipline in our schools is first and foremost, we try to build kids' self-esteem and their egos and help them along the path. By doing this, it's intimidating, it's singling out students, it's actually a very grown-up way of bullying students. And I'm sorry, it's totally unacceptable. With that, let me turn it over. To my colleagues, I thank you for, for putting up with me. I'm going to ask uh, Councilmember Antonio Reynoso to uh, proceed with the question. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Chair Drum, um, for your testimony and everything you've said so far. I think it's enlightening. I, I still have to wear my orange shirt, by the way, until I'm finished with punishment. So, I've, I, so I will refrain from, to, from speaking to you.